You are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the June 23rd, 2023 special meeting of the Long Beach Town Council. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. Recording in progress. To the special meeting of the Long Beach Town Council on June 23rd, 2023. How's that? Better? Can you hear me? Okay. All right, welcome to the June 23rd special Town Council meeting of, of the uh, Town of Long Beach. Um, let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Okay, under opening remarks, I uh, just want to remind everybody we're here to talk about the building, the uh, public safety building. We've invited the uh, building corporation, we've invited Holiday Construction and the uh, representative from the health department to be here. I'm not sure if the health department is here, but I know they've spoken with our building commissioner, Larry Wall. Also, she's, she's, oh, Amanda is here. Oh, good, great, thanks. Um, oh, and, and Haas and Associates are here also. Um, I want to just point out a couple changes to the agenda order, nothing new in the agenda. Uh, first off, sanitary septic next step, LaPorte County Health Department is going to be the first agenda item, and pending invoice holiday construction will be the last agenda item. Otherwise, the agenda is as stands. What it is? Very difficult to hear. Yeah. Okay, so first off, the uh, sanitary septic next step, LaPorte County Health Department. Uh, Amanda, can you kind of fill us in on where the health department is with this project? If you hit the button, hold it in. There you go. Good morning. You have to talk right into the microphone really close, I'm afraid. So just give you, oh my. <laughs> Um, so since this is a commercial project, it does have to go through the Indiana Department of Health. I have been in contact with them. A new application was submitted um, by Mr. Walsh, Larry Wall, um, yesterday with the Department of Downstate to um, get a temporary holding tank so construction can continue. So once we get approval from IDOH, um, they will size a properly sized holding tank for the project and we can move forward from there. So basically just so everybody understands the idea would be we could continue with the project you guys would grant a pump and haul permit is that correct? We could grant a pump and haul permit correct Okay. after we get everything back from IDOH. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions? Yeah I do. At what point though do we have to have a a design permit acceptable septic system to handle this commercial building. This holding tank is just a temporary place, right? And so we need to have an easement or a placement for it, number one. And it's got to be approved by the state, number two. Mm -hmm. It's got to be designed. And how long does all that take? So a lot of it falls back on on you and on who you hire with and how quick the plans can be developed and submitted to the state. Once the state receives plans, they have 30 days to review them. And then any corrections that have to be made, it may be going back and forth, it may get approved the first time, it just depends on how they're engineered. But I would definitely go ahead and continue if you're looking at having a septic system to get soils done ahead of time to make sure that you will be able to have a septic system. Yeah, but my concern is we get it started building it and we don't have the septic approval or the plans approval and then what do we do? I mean, Right. So this past legislation session did pass, um, I don't remember, Senate Bill or House Bill 1414, which does not allow for holding tanks, for permanent holding tanks. 
So continue, does what? That allows for permanent holding tanks. Okay. So it's continual pumping every time the tank fills up. So there's plus and minuses to that. A, it's going to have to be an extremely large tank, and it still has to meet the other setbacks for construction. So you can't park on it. It has to be 10 feet from any permanent structure. Poor concrete is considered a permanent structure. You have to have a service plan, a signed contract, alarms and whistles, so when it gets to a certain level, knowing when it has to be pumped, and then the cost of pumping it. So in the long term, that's going to add up very quickly, but it's something that could be looked at as well. So right now the intent is to size the tank such that when we get the permanent installation in, whether we're allowed, we're going to submit drawings as this progresses. Mm -hmm. One option would be to have the current mount system suffice. Mm -hmm. The other option would be to have an additional mount put in where the current one is. Mm -hmm. A third option would be to run the liquid effluent down to our, our own property down near the uh, uh, community centers. Big okay. school out there, and then sizing the tank such that it's going to accommodate either of those scenarios. Right, and that will be sized by IDOH. But yeah. So that's that's what we're at. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Amanda? Thanks, Amanda. Okay. Hey, how, how expensive is pump and haul? So typically, pump and haul they charge you by the gallon. Okay. So it's going to, that's going to be the determinant factor okay. there. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And again, our typical use is very, very limited. There's nobody in there permanently. You know, meetings like this, generally there isn't a lot of restroom use, so essentially there's very little effluent. We already have provisions in the design for the floor drains, which you've already told us, the state has told us that we cannot put into the sanitary, so we have Correct. that separate, that tank is separate on the site drawings, and the intent is to have a holding tank, which is a grease separator, to take the, the effluent from the floor drains exclusively, and that's going to get through the grease separator, and then that'll be on a pump and haul. Again, very little use, occasional uh, washing of vehicles, and that's it. Right, which I completely understand, but when the state is com sizing commercial projects, they're looking at the potential use of the building. Absolutely. So that's what they have to size on. Mm -hmm. Amanda, I have a question. Thanks for coming, by the way. Um, I'm Tim Perry. Um, is, is, so we, it sounds like we have a lot of good options to explore to figure out how to best provide. Tim, Tim that, that, that's probably, this, your question is not appropriate. This is a council meeting. You're not a member of the council. Uh, Amanda, anybody else have any questions for Amanda from the council? I guess I can't ask it. Thank you. You can ask it later during public comments. In fact, I've already screwed up the agenda order in public comments. It was actually supposed to be before this, so I'm going to open to public comments now so that we can consider public comments when the council makes their decision. So I'm going to open to public comments here, and it's limited to three minutes, and I'm going to be keeping time. Are you and let Tim go first, then. Yeah, Tim, go first. Okay, I'm back. Um, all right, well, I'm a, a member of the public. My name is Tim Perry. I live at 1802 Lakeshore Drive. I've been there since 1978. And uh, I have a few comments and questions, I guess, and I know the timer is running. Amanda, um, we have a lot of good options, it sounds like. Is there any chance, any, is there any chance at all that these options are all uh, denied and we don't have an option or, or or does it look like for sure we've got some way to get our septic handled for this building and we Dr. Lemay if I just because of the size of the meeting and the interest in it what I would suggest is that we accumulate these questions and to, public comments are not a question and answer session so okay having allowing everybody to ask their questions and then making sure they're answered versus but again, having an interchange because it's, it's going to prolong and all get right. confused. All right, all right. My, so my comments would be, um, it, uh, this obviously passed. The fire station was voted on, our public safety building was voted on, and it passed. And I think like so many things in Long Beach, it becomes an us versus them. And I, this, in my opinion, isn't about whether we get a public safety building or not. And it's not about the people who don't want it or want it. It's about the fact that it looks like, according to the state, that we were not able to provide a septic system. And that, in my role, became a, a concern because I thought, well, gee, we, we're 
didn't really handle the sewer thing properly. We possibly are on the hook for a half million dollars there. And in my clerk treasurer role, I thought, I don't want to gamble with the taxpayers' money and possibly throw more good money after bad and find out we can't build this thing. So I hope that the state and the county will allow us to have septic. And I hope that we're cautious about the money that we spend before we actually know that because the town, as I, as I mentioned, is already on the hook for our last project that didn't go through. And I don't think the taxpayers want to risk additional funds for a project that may not happen. Thank you. Other questions? Really? Come on. Yep. Oh, hold on. We're racing through the race. Good morning. Thank you for holding this meeting. Anita Ramages. Who just said, oh gosh? I don't need those comments. Anita Ramages, 2300 Florimond. One, um, Mr. Perry, um, in your public comments, I believe as clerk treasurer, you just mentioned let's work together. We don't want to gamble with the taxpayers' money and be cautious with the taxpayers' money. And I would suggest to all the people here and on Zoom that they look at past council meetings, past budget and finance meetings, that they look at how you gamble with the taxpayers' money, how you are not cautious with the taxpayers' money. Let her make her comments, please. Let's be civil, John. You too. Let's be civil, <laughs> that is civil. You made the comments. Number two, Mr. Coker, at the last meeting you shouted out who's in charge anyway. According to what I know, there are four elected council members and one appointed council members who sit on council. And you have continuously pushed this back so that John Wall had to say, I guess I'm in charge. You should all be in charge. You should all be knowledgeable. You should know what the documents say. As a matter of fact, Mr. Coker, you then brought in a firm named Baker Lilly. You wanted to spend 10000 I think it was budgeted at 5000 I haven't seen a report. I haven't seen an invoice. I haven't seen anything. So I um, just want to say, let's all, be, let's all be knowledgeable. You are appointed and you are elected. Thank you. Uh, Tom's neighbor here again, 2305 Lakeshore Drive. Um, I'd like to remind you of what your responsibilities are as council members. Okay, you were elected by the people. You're representing us. There's widespread support for this project. You've got fiduciary responsibilities. You've got obligations that you have to meet. You voted unanimously back in December to approve this public safety building, okay? That's an obligation that you need to fulfill and you need to meet. You then have a signed contract with a construction company. Another obligation that you need to meet and you need to do your, your responsibility. Take into consideration, uh, Mr. Perry mentioned about the uh, potential half million dollar liability we have for the, uh, for the sewer project. Uh, having this possibility to Michigan City. Half a million dollars on that. Uh, the fact that we've had to bring in uh, outside people at additional expense to do Mr. Perry's job, other money we've spent, good money after bad. And now, let me remind you that if you decide to breach this contract today, you are gonna add a substantial an enormous additional financial responsibility to the town of Long Beach. And that will be your legacy when you leave office at the end of this year, the succession of failed projects and the amount of debt that you've heaped on the town. So I'd encourage you to follow through with the obligations that you've met, pay this construction company, and let's do what we have to do today in this room if we have to bring in sandwiches and pizza to hammer this all out, let's get this done and approved today what you voted for back in December. Hello, my name is...
name's Paul Applegate. Um, I've been a CPA for 48 years, and I live on 2310 Fairway Drive in Long Beach. I'm here to show my support for the Long Beach Fire Department, which includes my son and daughter, Blake and Megan Applegate, and my son-in-law, Matt Weber. Uh, we are so fortunate to have these volunteers, and the key word's volunteer, who are willing to sacrifice their time with their families, friends, careers, and even their lives, potentially their lives, in order to serve the Long Beach community. Uh, I've heard rumors going around that there are some individuals that are not supportive of the fire department nor this building, and I can only say that, again, I raise the question, how many of us have risked our lives as a volunteer? I can't think of too many other than these people. Um, we have very qualified people on our uh, department who deserve a facility that serves their needs. We also have a beautiful community. We have multi-million dollar homes. And I'd really hate to see us put up a cheap looking uh, public safety building that doesn't blend in with the rest of the community. Um, Long Beach in Indiana is probably comparable to Hinsdale or some of the high end uh, areas in the suburbs of Chicago. So I think, I hope that council will keep this project moving forward and deliver the kind of building that would be representative of the town of Long Beach. Anybody else here in person? Anybody on Zoom? Anybody on Zoom want to raise their hand if they have a comment? Uh, yeah, how, invite me, invite Grace. Oh shit, yeah. Hello? Can you unmute me? You're, uh, you're unmuted. <laughs> Who are you? Oh, oh, oh okay. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, Mary O'Neill, 1532 Lakeshore Drive. Um, first off, I, I just have to say it's been extremely difficult to understand but I had a hard time understanding Amanda, so if some of what I'm saying um, is no longer accurate, I apologize. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to say nobody is arguing against building the firehouse public safety building. The problem is doing it the right way. Um, any, pub, any private person would not be allowed to put a shovel in the ground until they had an approved septic permit. We're still working on a lot of woulda, coulda, shoulda with this, and maybe we should be looking at a plan B. You have all this land up by the maintenance shed, maintenance facility, it could go there, you, could, you wouldn't necessarily need the brick facade, you could save money there. Um, we just, it's the extra cost. Now you're talking about you might have to run something over to the community center. I think it's unconscionable and almost orders on malfeasance by the town council to allow this to go forward without all the pieces in place. Our town attorney has been warning us for months of the, um, the problem with this dual track and now all of a sudden the, the lines are converging and, and it's, 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 it's just not good. Um, and so I would urge you to have a plan B. Yes, we have these obligations, and we have several obligations, but I think if you continue down this road um, without having a viable plan B, you're, you're looking at trouble. Um, thank you for your time. Anybody else on Zoom? <laughs> okay, uh, uh, public safety building. Whoa. Wait a minute. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is Nola Gertner, and I'm sorry, I can't see how to raise my hand. I just have two things, please, that I'd like to have addressed as we move forward. I'm at 2302 Fairway Drive. As we get forward to our part of the agenda where we're going to be going to the budget, et cetera, for this and everything, the cost of this building this project, I would like to know if F, F, and E, furniture, fixtures, and equipment, have already been factored into this amount that we've committed or is that going to be something additional? And if so, I would like to know if we've got a cost for what those will be. The only other comment I have is, and I understand project um, deadlines and, and how things have been set for this particular building, because I worked in the industry. 
We have got the busiest weekend of all the year coming up in, in the town of Long Beach for 4th of July. And as we are scheduled now for the delivery of the equipment and what's going to be happening on that site, that's all going to be now not available to the public for parking, whatever we need for this particular weekend. It would be really nice and would seem to be well planned if we held off the delivery of everything until after that. Otherwise, that's all I have to say. I'm looking forward to the meeting. And I agree with the last uh, person that commented. It is very difficult. You're not coming through clear or well heard on this Zoom. So thank you very much. Now, Bob. Um, I hope this thing's on. Yeah, it is. Bob Boyce, Stop 29. I look at this whole project a little different than most people. I've been involved in projects just like this. And without putting the blame on anybody directly, I think that the, whoever the project manager is on this job, it's kind of being done backwards. Uh, normally, on any kind of a job like this, you'd have a plan of survey, a location of, the of where the building would be, You'd have all your easements set, and you'd also have your septic permits. That, you know, everything would be in place before you went forward. This is like putting the cart before the horse. Now we're trying to solve problems after the fact. Now, there's one big problem with the lot out there that nobody's even considered. And that's that there's easements out there and that there's a street out there that has to be vacated before you can even start tearing up asphalt. If the, anybody would look at the plans for this building and look at the plans for that parking lot, they'd see that that whole place is planted. There are streets out there under the asphalt. And it would be the same situation as Stop 18 where they had to vacate that road going down to the lake. Willoughby knows all about that one before anything was ever handled. So right now, whoever the project manager is on this job from Holiday, they're derelict in their duty. They didn't do any research. And there's nothing against the building or the fire department. Uh, just for courtesy's sake. What? The, big pardon? You're at a minute and a half. You've got a minute and a half left. Well, I don't, I don't need another minute and a half, my friend. But the thing is that I would believe that this thing should go back to square one and put everything and correlate it properly and then go forward. Otherwise, it, it's kind of backwards. We're worried about a septic system having a building delivered. Thank you. Anybody else? Back to the agenda. Uh -oh. um, this is, uh, I forgot one, my most important point. Met Mary, you only get one shot at this, okay? Uh, <laughs> Hi. Hi, this is Meg Collins. No, no, hold, hold on, Meg. We've got somebody here standing okay. the microphone. But okay. Next. Vicki's neighbor, uh, stop 23. So it's frustrating as a person who spent over 40 years in business when we start a project, when we spend money, when we do planning, and of course, most of us have built houses, you know that things change at the end, etc. But when that happens, no regular consumer would say, I know I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars already, but you know what? Let's go back to zero, and I'll feel good about you keeping all my money and all of that. It's ridiculous. We made decisions back in December. We have a history here, and I've been here four years. We have a history here of making decisions, spending thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, and feeling really good about giving up and letting that go to nothing. It's unconscionable, we, talk, we use that word. Yes, it's unconscionable that that happens. And lastly, I would say again, is if there should be some mechanism, if there are approvals that are uh, actually obtained, if someone on the council or in the community goes behind the scenes, back door, that person or persons should have enough integrity to stand here before the, the council and tell us what they did, why they did, what they did, and how that decision was made without any ability to refute it. Thank you. Thank you. Meg, Meg, you're up now. Hi, this is Meg Collins. 
2400 floor on my drive. I just have a short comment that infra infrastructure costs money and progress costs money. And the surrounding towns and townships in our area and in Northwest Indiana have decent infrastructure for their police and fire. Um, this project is planned and it's moving along and it needs to move along. It needs to move forward. Oh. And it's really easy to offer ideas and say how this can be done better. And the time and effort put into this project is immeasurable. Um, the need for this project is years in the making. It's at least 15 years, maybe you could even say 20 or 30 years, that people have been trying to get this project going. And the people who have put all this time and effort in, it's absolutely immeasurable. And for people to stand up and say that they think they can do better, to offer ideas at this point, if you think you can do better, then give your time and put in the time and the work to be part of the solutions and the progress that make our town so great. Thank you. Thanks, Meg. All right, is there anybody else, either in person or on Zoom, who would like to comment? <laughs> I just want to read Judy Langley, 2019 Somerset Road. I just want to reiterate all the public comments that ask and beg the council to represent us and work together shoulder to shoulder to bring this home. I'm sure there's a lot of conflicts, I'm sure there's a lot of challenges, but the thing that will make or break us is a true and honest commitment that we voted on and agreed to in December to get this done together. Something proud, aspirational, good common sense within budget. I know we can do it. I just want to hear the spirit of collaboration, particularly on this council. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Jim Nyland, 2201 Florimont. I will hope that the council as a whole could address some of the rumors that have been going around about the public service building. Uh, I've been told that people believe that the directors of the Public Building Corporation are receiving $100,000. <laughs> I've been told that there'll be a full-size gym in the new public service building. Just a half. I've heard the rumor that this project has been costing up to $8 million. The biggest rumor I heard was that our town clerk is not 6'10", he's 5'3". <laughs> <laughs> so I know that there's uh, three members of the council that have questions about going forward with the public service building. And I would hope that we in the audience would actually hear your concerns and that the people here, Amanda, you know it's very important uh, a meeting when Amanda Landers is here. Uh, I would hope that you three would actually speak up and express all your concerns about this. And I think you will be satisfied that once we go forward that we will all be happy. Thank you. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. All right. Uh, you do the introduction now. So what I'd like to do at this point, we have some people involved uh, in this project that are here this morning, and I'd like to introduce them to you. We have two members of the building corporation. Uh, Ed Goslin was not able to be here. He had a prior commitment. His son's off to the Coast Guard, which I'm very proud of, and he is as well. So they're handling that for this weekend, getting him off to uh, OCS school. Uh, Corey, if you'd please stand. Corey Solar, Dan Moon. Uh, Dan, left. Dan left had to make it. I'm sorry. So Corey and Dan are, are serving with no remuneration, absolutely no remuneration. They volunteered, as did Ed, to be members of the building corporation. Uh, John Coker, I think, helped uh, Corey and Dan come along to be involved, and I helped Ed come along to be involved. We're very proud of their efforts, and we're happy that they're part of the project. I'd like to introduce the design team right now. We have in our presence Tom's neighbor, if you'd stand, Tom Yem. Megan Applegate, Doug Wickstrom, 
This is your design team. These people have worked tirelessly over the last four or five months to bring this project home. We went from a building. We went from a bidding process that was very complex and complicated. We put a, a scope of work together back in the summer last year, and we worked feverishly with these individuals to, to zero that in. Holiday Construction, a very reputable firm who in a couple of minutes will give us a little brief introduction to the design. We're so pleased that they wound up with the low bid. They were the low bid, and they had an absolutely fantastic concept. This design team took that concept from 30% to 100% now, and we did a lot of different things to try to make exactly what was discussed with some of these public comments in terms of trying to make this building functional, economical, effective, and pleasing to the town in terms of aesthetics. Uh, so the holiday team is going to come up here in a second. Uh, I'd like to introduce both of them to you. Clayton Trueblood, this young man right here. Laura Small, who's his architect, interior, uh, and uh, design team person. So at this writing then, our next agenda item is for them, For I guess uh, Laura will take those duties. What we have behind us is some hard ones, and I actually have some other more detailed drawings rolled up in the corner. So if you have the des desire to see more detail, you're welcome to come up afterwards and take a look at all this. So Laura. Okay, thank you so much, John. As John mentioned, my name is Laura Small. I'm an architect with Holiday Properties and Clay Trueblood with Holiday Construction Group. We were awarded the design build proposal for this new project, and we are happy to present the final drawings and go through any other questions that you may have for us during this during this meeting today. Um, we went through and with the design team, I believe produced a beautiful structure and a building that's not just a metal building, and that will enhance the aesthetics of Long Beach. Again, as what was mentioned, there are beautiful homes here. They aren't shafts. You have great homes. There's been a lot of money spent. And we think that the money being spent on this building is well worth more than just a metal building and a lot of good aesthetics for the, for the community. I think that's, unless people have questions for me, but. Bob's running short, but yeah. Are we have I mean, any detail on this or? Well, that Megan's got a presentation to make. That's the next one up, and that'll be a little more detailed. Um, okay. All right. In terms of some of the changes and some right. of the things that have happened since the 30% drawings to the 100% drawings. Right. Okay, Megan. All right. Just a little bit taller than 5'3", but not 6'10". Uh, good morning. My name is Megan Applegate, captain of Long Beach Fire Department, and I'm also a CPA at Applegate & Company CPAs. Ironically, Assistant Chief Yems, Lieutenant Applegate, and I had planned on taking this morning off, but not to attend this meeting but instead to give a tour to the same group of special needs children that visited our station last year and are currently there right now. Unfortunately, we are missing that tour and the joyous expression on their faces as they get to hold a fire hose, try on a fire helmet, or sit in a fire truck. So I asked the town council to make today a very positive outcome and worth us missing that experience. So real quickly, I just wanted to show you guys. These are some of the pictures from last year's visit and then the drawings they made us as well. So we're more than just a fire department. We do community outreach and I'll get into more of that a little bit uh, later, but those are the pictures that we had from them from our visit last year. I'm hoping Bart takes some or numbers to take some today. And then also the drawings, which were thank you notes that they sent to our department. Additionally, I want to thank the Town Council for their continued positive efforts in moving this project forward. We know that there has been substantial time spent from each of you for this building. I've been on the department since 2008. In that time, I've consoled spouses and family members during a time of need. I've been a familiar face or a shoulder to cry on. I've been up from midnight until 6 a.m. fighting a fire to then go to my day job at 8 a.m during tax season. And the best part of all of this is that we all do it for free. All of our members. I've had people come up to me at the 4th of July with extreme gratitude for showing up at their house at 3 a.m. to lift them off the floor. Long Beach Fire Department is a crucial part of this community that we serve. I have some additional photos as well. Uh, the first one is when there was a group of young girls in our community that hosted a bake sale and lemonade stands to raise money for Long Beach Fire Department. That's this photo. 
Uh, during COVID, we had uh, birthday drive-bys with our fire trucks for little kids who couldn't have birthday parties with their friends. So we tried to raise their spirits and drive by with the fire truck. So that's what this next picture is. Uh, we have Bart Delavar that goes to the Long Beach summer camp and sprays the kids with a deck gun and they enjoy it in the middle of summer. This is the next picture with Bart and Christina who met with the kids last year. Uh, the next picture is a picture of myself at my sister's elementary school second grade class showing them what it means to be a volunteer firefighter but then also a CPA professional during the day and what that means. And then next I have a picture of our ice skating rink that Bart and Mike and some of the others put up that is no easy task thanks to the help of the street department and bringing over the, uh, the liner that we used. Unfortunately it was a mild winter this year so I didn't get to enjoy it as much but here's a picture of some kids on the ice cream. Or ice cream, excuse me. And then as you know we have our ice cream social coming up on July 3rd um, that we always invite everybody to attend. So in working with holiday construction, we have finalized the plans, which gave us the total cost of construction based on the input from Chief Swistek, the Long Beach Fire Department, surrounding neighbors, the town council members, and residents. Like others have said in the public comment, we live in a beautiful community with architecture from John Lloyd Wright and historical structures that we have worked hard to preserve and keep aesthetically pleasing, including this town hall. So now, we work hard to keep that same theme by constructing an appealing, well-built public safety building, not only based on the needs of the town today, but the future as well. We are very excited about the look and curb appeal of this building, as you can see with the pictures behind. We have drawings here today for everyone to get an idea of what it will look like, but there have been some changes that have been made. Some of those changes include the Versetta Stone samples that are here today. Clerk Perry, would you mind holding that up, please, sir? Right in front of you, thank you. That's the Versetta Stone that would be the facade on the building. It's gorgeous. Additionally, we have reinforced framing of the roof that will allow us to make this building a green building with the potential for solar panels in the future. We want our town residents, employees, and council members safe when using this building, so a fire suppression system is now included for the safety and well-being of those individuals. Police Chief Swissek built the Michigan City Police Department, so he has experience in this. He's added some technology to the Long Beach building, so all of those you, of you that are complaining on Zoom, hopefully this will be resolved this time next year, because you'll actually be able to hear this meeting, or hopefully the meeting won't even be here, actually, to be honest. Um, so we also have a security system that will mirror that of the town hall to ensure the safety of the people using the building. And then the parking lot has been designed with safety in mind, with curbing, handicap accessibility, and a thoughtful design to control the traffic in that area. But unfortunately, changes come with additional cost. And as we are all aware, our country and others around the world are facing inflation that continues to grow at a rapid rate. This project began in December of 2022, and some of those prices for construction we were able to lock in, which is fantastic. However, for some, we were not as fortunate, and we are incurring some price increases because of that. As a CPA, I work with many clients, some of which include businesses with sales of over $350 million, and then some are various nonprofit clients in the area. In working with them, I've had vast experience reviewing and formulating budgets for various projects my clients had. And with that said, I've reviewed every line item on the spreadsheet that I'm about to hand out to you, detailing the cost, the change in scope, and the variance for this building project. And I feel confident that the final, number, final numbers on that spreadsheet here are, are accurate. We recognize the financial commitment our town and its residents have made to this building. And the fire department wants to assist with our own fundraising dollars and contribute $50,000 towards the additional costs that are required for the changes that I, I mentioned before. Additionally, we have received commitment of $30,000 from residents in Long Beach who are strong supporters of our first responders in our town to assist with the changes in the building costs. So based on the finalized pricing from Holiday Con Construction, we respectfully request the town assist with the remaining variance in the change of scope of $295,000 to move forward with the changes and create an aesthetically pleasing, 
long living building that will be the focal point of our town for many years to come. So now I'm going to hand to you a detailed outline spreadsheet which shows the original cost, the variance, and the change in scope, and then some notes. So I'm happy to go over this line item by line item with each council member as, as you have questions. So at the very top, what you're seeing are multiple columns. The first column that says original cost. Um, the next then is the revised cost, which is dated May 15th, and then the variance, which would be the difference between the two. And the two far right columns, we have a change in scope, and then we have some town responsibilities where we're hoping that the town will be able to help us on some of these because it's ultimately gonna better the town and the building for its residents and neighbors. So up top, we've got some design fees that were added. That's an additional $7,000. Some of that's related to the redesign, specifically for some of the earth, earthwork. We have a new water line off of St. Lawrence, Maine to feed the fire suppression system, which we find is very important based on the size of this building. Where, where are you, Maine? On the top page. Okay. So right there, so. Oh, okay. So here's the change in scope and then the top, so those are some of the additional costs. Okay. <laughs> Uh, additionally, we've got some elevation changes. So if you look at where we're at right now, and you look at the fire station and then go back further, there's some elevation changes when you look at those two spots. So because of that, it's gonna require additional curbing, some retainment, which we know retainment, I know personally, is not cheap. In addition to that, we have the Versetta Stone. Versetta Stone was not free, but as Mr. Perry held up, it's a beautiful stonework that's going to add a, a very aesthetically pleasing facade for our town. It will go well with the other buildings in the town. We've got a professional designer that helped with that choice. So unfortunately it did not come at no additional cost. What's very interesting is that the cost of the steel structure building since this whole project started, it has increased, the price of it has increased by 26%. So that is why today, like Mr. neighbor said, we have to crank this out or the clock keeps ticking and prices keep going up with inflation. So that steel structure has now gone up. In addition to that, we've had to do some reinforced steel in order to feed the, um, the fire suppression system. But on top of that, to reinforce the roof for the solar panels, that came at no, or that came at an additional cost as well. Chief Swissex, AV, data, security, all of that came at additional cost that we did not originally include in the drawings. Like I said, there's a fire protection system that was not included in the original drawings. We've got great overhead doors that'll make our department look very nice. Those pre-finished doors, they're very big. We added the back police door as well. That was not in the original scope. And with that pre-finished doors, we saved a little bit on the painting, so that was kind of a plus and minus. I know I'm going through this really quickly, but I, I want to make sure that a, I highlight the items, which I already kind of said in my narrative, but B, if you have questions as you're going through this, you can ask myself, we've got the construction team here, or John Wall as well. If you take the total additional variance as a percentage of the contract, the total contract price, it's less than 10% of the difference that we're asking for. So go ahead, Mr. Johnson. Thanks, Mayor. Great presentation. Um, just some clarifications and some reconciling some of these numbers. Mm -hmm. When I do the, the simple math and I look at the 3.1 million Correct. minus the original 2.5, I come up with a difference of $627,000. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you've got over here in the far right the town's responsibilities of um, $405,000. Mm -hmm. Now, is, is the balance then coming from other sources? Negative, so I worked with Mr. Sender on this. So as you recall, we included a small contingency already. So what was included in the original bond issuance was $2.84 million. We had cost of issuance that had been deducted, so that leaves a remaining $2.75 million currently sitting in the bank account to pay this project. So then I backed out the $50,000 that we are going to pay as a fire department on top of the $30,000, but we've already received five of that $30,000 from the, for the, uh, from the residents. We have another $25,000 that's coming based on a commitment from another resident 
which leaves the 294, 970. So it's actually less than the 405. We're, we're looking at it because of that amount that's already in the bank account. So it's related to the bonds. I have the bond schedule here too if you want, Mike. So part of that reconciliation is uh, we went to 2.9 million for finance charges and for contingencies. You're including that contingency number, which was never really given to us as a separate number. Right, it was actually 2.84, but yeah. I'm, I round, I'm rounding. Yeah, 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 So correct, that money is already in the bank account. So Mr. Sender included- so what, was the, what was the contingency money? I think if we did 2.5 less than, so 340,000, but we've got the cost of issuance, so it's probably around 260, 270, that was a contingency already. We also were hoping that the town was gonna pay the pre, uh, the interest on the first year's note that should have come out of the town essentially because that's not construction costs. It was financed, uh, that was the first year's payment that the US bank required us to put into an escrow mm -hmm. that essentially should have come out of town funds because that's part of the first year's payment. What happened was that that did not happen based on the clerk's uh, efforts. So the uh, additional first year's prepaid interest came out of the construction or the rather the loan proceeds that reduced it a little bit further. But we always had that couple hundred thousand dollars worth of contingency money in the original mm -hmm. land financing. All right, just, just to kind of go back to our December 27th date when the town council unanimously approved this project at a total cost of $2.5 million. Uh, for those of you that weren't at that meeting, um, that approval was done subject to um, if there were any increases in that cost, um, that it would be brought back to the town council and the town council would then have to approve that amount of money. Now, when we did our 2.8 million, uh, it was not really at that point defined as to what was contingency money versus financing. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I have a communication that John and I shared and went back and forth on that at that point in time confirming that our construction costs were still $2.5 million. So for anybody in this audience that thinks that we approved an open-ended amount in December 27th of 2022, that is incorrect. We approved $2.5 million. So when we're sitting here talking about this today, and, and by the way, I also sit on the Budget and Finance Committee, I also sit on the Fire Commission Committee, so I've been involved, um, at least on a monthly basis, getting updates as we go forward. Uh, this is the first time now, we're, about, we're almost seven months into the project, where we have uh, delineated numbers that actually specifically say what this project is going to cost. So um, when we did our analysis in the Budget and Finance Committee, we've John and I created a five-year capital plan two years ago for the town, not just for volunteer fire department, but for all items that the town is facing down the road in terms of expenditures. Um, and then, and that was prepared by our accounting firm um, uh, on our behalf. And it also included a debt servicing of any of those items going out into the future as to how we're gonna pay for them. Now this project was done at two and a half million dollars with almost minimal impact on um, our taxes. Um, we believe that we have excess revenue coming from that um, substantial enough to pay that $2.5 million, which was approved. Now we're looking at a project of $3.1 million. And so um, we have to understand that this is an important decision on the part of the town council. And there's been comments made that we really don't know what we're doing. It's not at all true at all. Uh, we actually know what we're doing. And we've looked at these numbers, but this is the first time we've sat down and actually know now what the specific costs of this project are, which we approved at $2.5 million, December 27th. <coughs> Correct, and, and if I recall, there was a later meeting where I think Mr. Sender had said you should build in some contingency and that's where the 2.84 came in. So when when I give you the number, what I'm thinking about is, okay, like you know, Mike, what's the additional out-of-pocket cost, right? So we can't issue additional bonds, that, that's not an option. So $295,000, that is the golden number to make this building based on the changes that I had listed, which were not included in the original cost, to make it what this town not only once, but deserves. So I, I agree, it, it is no small number in this project. I, I will tell you right now, I have a picture of 
Center Township, they recently built a fire station. It was actually, they started that project before the pandemic. So the picture I'm going to show you, um, this was pre-pandemic construction costs. And this building that you, you're looking at that I'll show you cost $2.4 million. So there's that. So when you look at what they received for $2.4 million, and yes, $3.1 million is no little number. I have the, the bond schedule here based on the 2.84. So like I said, you know, the, the town, or excuse me, Mr. Sender has figured in what the town can afford based on the 2.84, which included that contingency as well as the 2.5, which was approved. So at this point, like I had said, the 295 is where we would have to look at some additional funds, some art money. You know, some of that is additional water work. So is that something where we can, because of the water main coming in, the hydrant for the fire suppression system, which ultimately benefits the town, can we take some money from the water budget? On top of the fact that there's additional street work that has to be done, the retainment, the curbing, the sidewalks, the street department budget. So I, I, I guess I would encourage the town council to not just look at the number and get spooked by the number, but more so have an open discussion. How can we afford this? Can we afford it? Which I believe we can based on the, the budget of this town and move forward so we can keep the progress of this building going because as this drags on more and more, not only is it going to delay the project, it's going to be incurring additional costs. On top of that, inflation. And these people want to get paid. I wouldn't do work until I got paid either. So you can't blame them for being here today wanting their invoice paid. It's understood. Um, again, the number on this page says the town's application is an additional four hundred and five thousand dollars. Correct. That was for based on the original two point five. The, so the additional go ahead. All right, so you're saying that even though we didn't know the dollar amount, what we approved for the two point nine Yes. It's been netted out of that. Correct. Yeah, so the 2.5 is the original. So that's the difference between the column, which is variance. So you've got 2.5 minus 3.1 is the 627. That number, town responsibilities, those are numbers that John, Tom, and Tom and I put together in that saying, well, you know, what could we ask the town for responsibility? What is some of it related to ours? So that's where we're coming in with the original 2.5 which included a contingency in the 2.84 in the bank. And so if I back out all the funds, the money that's in the bank, the money that's coming from us, the money that's coming from the residents, we are only asking the town for an additional 295. Bottom line, not the 405. The 405 is purely us netting together some of those numbers. The true variance, Mike, is that 627. That's based on the original versus what the end result is. But we did not approve a specific dollar amount with that 2.9 because that was not broken out, was not reconciled at that time. Correct. It was a combination of finance charges and contingency. Contingency, you're right. So I understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. but now we're reconciling this project mm -hmm. almost seven months into it. Correct. Okay, I want everybody to understand that. In, in the time that we have started this project, the, the building costs went up almost $83,000. So that's part of that contingency, in my opinion. As far as the change in scope, I think that 295 is related to some of the AV stuff that we chose to do. The beautiful canopies that are on the outside of the building, the pre-finished doors, the Perseva stone, you know, some of those changes that weren't originally included in the 2.5. So it, of, the, of the additional um, uh, dollars, how much are um, uh, aesthetics it's a dollar figure on the increase based on aesthetics. I'd say, I mean, John, you can jump in on this or, or you know, holiday by any means. The, the problem is, is when you, when we ordered the building, when we added this per set of stone, you know, based on the design build process, you know, that building's coming with the anticipation of putting that stone on there. So to not put that on there, now you're going to have to find something else or some other way to make it. If we're I'm, not just, I'm just asking for okay. the number. So the, for, the, for the additional canopies, that's around $49,000. I'd say that's more aesthetics. And then the net cost of the first set of stone, that's another sixty-four eight. I'd say that's part of it. On top of the fact that the fire suppression system, that's $61,000. That, that was not included, but that's not aesthetics. That's, that's safety. So I, if we look at really just the aesthetics, I'd say it would really be, John, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the canopies and the percent stone which is an additional hundred and that's correct and then also some of the site work improvements so yeah. we, we could have patched back the asphalt during the project what we decided to do the design team decided that we should do better than that we should make sure that the paving that's around the project and in front of the doors for the fire department is a good solid paving section so what we decided to do was take that down 
make sure that the stone aggregate underneath there was adequate and then put all new asphalt in that parking area, the new parking area and the aprons out in front of the building. So some of those are as well not included in the original scope, but they're whether you call them aesthetics or whether you call them necessary to make sure that the project is acceptable to the town and, and holds up for 50 years like we anticipate. Yeah, I'm not defining aesthetics, I'm just asking the question is how much it was it. And the last question is, where is the cost of the septic system? We, we don't have the cost of the septic system. We had a permit based on our original application. We had a permit from the state and from the county. But as you probably know, or most people are aware, that there was a group of people in this town that decided to harass those two agencies in behalf of whatever their agenda was to try to limit the project. So we had so what, is, what is the cost of it? Well, let me finish, please. So we wound up having to go back to square one on the septic permit, which we've done now on two different occasions since those efforts were uh, fruitful on the part of the people that tried to do that. So now we're back to square one on the septic. We can give you definitive numbers on the septic as soon as we design it. We've already contacted McQuestion, who is the soil scientist for the county. He's doing the analysis at two locations. One would be the addition of another, uh, potentially, that we don't know yet for sure, potentially another mound on this, the Long Beach Holding Company property. And the the other one would be a potential uh, drainage field over there at the uh, the uh, community center. So you're right, Mike. Those costs are not necessarily in this yet. There was some money in there, but not all of it, because we again got turned back. So we have to start again on that process again. I mean, as Amanda has stated, she, and she can't go much farther than exactly what she said. But right now, we have alternative solutions for the septic situation. What those exact costs are, we don't. We haven't identified yet. So there's an additional cost that has not been included in the we That's showing. true. And if, if it true. turns out that there's an Indian burial ground out there or, you know, the soils fall apart, there could potentially be some other costs. Yes, there are some risks anytime you do a construction project. I will say, Mike, just, you know, when we decided on this $2.5 million, you know, there were 30% drawings. You know, we're, we're at 100% now, so you know. I mean, you've seen multiple, I'm sure, with your experience in making multiple clients come with additional money needed for construction projects. You, I mean, when I built my own home, you know, I thought it was going to be X, and it ended up being Y. I had to go back to the LaPorte County Health Department and put another lateral in there for my septic. But you know what? You did it, and you keep moving forward, and, and that's really what we want to do. So I know that... You know, you approved as a council two point five million dollars. That that was based on thirty percent drawings. We're presenting you to you today a hundred percent drawings for this project. But the caveat of like you said, the septic cost, we understand that. Unfortunately we're in that predicament. No, but it to be just reflect and I'm sorry to interrupt you, okay. what we should not have done back in December twenty seventh is approved anything at thirty percent drawings. We should wait it, in my opinion. We can't write, rewrite history, Mike, as you well know. I'm just telling let me, you. Let I'm, me address. I'm just, telling you, I'm just telling you reality, John. Let, let me address affordability very briefly. The 2022 financials that went into the state on the gateway system showed us with approximately four million dollars in cash on hand. As I re, uh, look at what we've got in terms of 2022 information from our clerk's office, which at present is not complete, we hope to have by the end of June statements for 2022 that are complete with the senator's efforts who by the way was brought in by the uh, town council president of the budget and finance committee to try to straighten out the disaster that our financial system uh, is in currently and if you look at those numbers in addition to the gateway submission that was made in 2022 which we're now finding out may not have been totally correct but at our last budget meeting uh, Trista Hudson from Sender informed us that she thinks we don't have any multiple six-figure differences in those numbers. In other words, the cash is truly in hand. That we have approximately four four million dollars without the water surpluses, by the way. So let's just call it three or four hundred thousand dollars in surplus cash that this town currently has. If we take that two hundred ninety-five thousand dollars, we're talking about less than ten percent of those funds to use for a very worthwhile project to keep the town moving forward that we can all be proud of. So just in terms of affordability, we're talking about asking the town for an additional commitment out of their reserve funding of approximately $300,000. That's less than 10% of their current reserves if we believe our own financial information. I'd like to call attention to one other item. The worst case scenario on the payment schedule for the bonds that we took out to pay for this project is approximately less than $300,000. The county, LaPorte County, in its wisdom, the council approved and passed a 
increase in the local option tax, which is an income tax on all the residents in the county. That money is earmarked specifically for public safety, meaning it can only be spent on police and fire equipment training and um, facilities. So this town, this town was gifted with an immense opportunity to pay for annual ex expenses of if we take out the 80000 we've committed to police salaries out of that public safety funding that's coming as a gift to this town that no one anticipated before the county paid, picked that up, we now are going to be able to pay for two-thirds of that annual payment of three hundred with that money that was newfound money, even if we discount it by the amount of money we plan to pay for the police department. Well-deserved, I might add, in terms of their salary increases. So in terms of affordability, I think we're, we're where we need to be. I think it's a very easy decision to make that additional $295,000 commitment. Any other comments? John, or Dr. Lee, I'd like to address something that has been put out there on public, um, on Facebook and other things. Um, when you talk about people went downstate or they mucked up the process, David Muntz, who I think works with Amanda, he had in his emails to Larry Wall and Chris Willoughby stating that application has been denied because of the misrepresentation of the new building. Application made no mention of meeting rooms, exercise facility, kitchen, and the washdown bay. So no one stirred up anything. The application wasn't accurate. And thank you for your respect. Go ahead. I, I just have a little thing I'd like to do at some point, a little presentation, but it doesn't have to be right now. Any other comments, questions? Thanks, Megan. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda, construction timeline update. Metal building arrives the week of June 26th. Um, John, do you have that? So this project, with the unanimous consent of the council over the last four or five months, has continued to progress thanks to the efforts of the building corporation, individuals, the design team, and our uh, construction uh, partner, Holiday Construction. As I've told the council on numerous occasions, that process has continued at a feverish pace because we intended to do it as we all agreed to do it, and that is to get it done this year. In order to make that happen, there are lots of different variables that we tried to accommodate. One was that we didn't want to disturb, but once we, once we obviously we tear down the old fire station, we have to put the fire equipment somewhere. So the way we're going to accommodate that is we intended to put it in the street garage, which displaces some of the street equipment. So the idea was, let's get this thing done this year. Let's have the building shell up. The plan right now is to demolish the fire department right after Labor Day. We didn't want to do that during the, the uh, summer months if we could help it. But also, we also need to get the paving done. So the, the paving plant shut down around October or so. So we wanted to make sure we had that building down and got the parking lots in so we'd be ready for winter. But in order to not disrupt Tom's wintertime activities when he needs his plows in, that's why we need to stay on schedule. So we continue to update the council and we made this thing happen and we kept it moving forward. So the construction timeline included the building delivery. Right now there's an invoice outstanding. I'm moving slightly ahead here and I apologize, but there's an outfit, there's an invoice outstanding to holiday construction that's due by January, or excuse me, June 30th, that includes the down payment only for the building that the building delivery uh, it requires. So we need to pass that to this, this morning, that invoice, approve that invoice, which was at the council level uh, at the last council meeting, but the, some of the council members denied that uh, paying that invoice. Holiday needs to pick that invoice, pay that invoice to the building uh, supplier so that we can get that delivery and make sure it happens. If this were not to happen next week, if we hold up on that building delivery, there are costs involved in that, as you may all be aware and can anticipate. Anytime you order something, tell somebody it's coming, or, or agree that it's okay that it comes, and then you get it delivered, it's gotta be paid for. So we're sitting here with a building that's gonna show up next week. If we choose to delay that process, what happens is you got two options. It sits at their plant, 
and they haven't even told us what that would potentially cost us, or it sits on semi-trailers somewhere, whether we sit it here, find a home for it here, or it sits on some other site that we may have to pay for. That Those costs are identifiable. It's $3,000 a week for every week that, that, that uh, those building materials sit on trailers. So that's our exposure if we choose not to allow the building to be delivered next week by virtue of not paying that invoice. So that's where we sit in terms of the construction timeline update. <clears throat> we also want to get moving on being allowed or allowing the contractor to make progress such that he can put up the fencing around the site and get started on the parking lot asphalt removal and the foundation uh, excavation so we can get this thing put up. Sanitary, I'm sorry, sanitary next steps, we've, we've kind of beat that dead horse. I don't think we need to do too much. Demolition environmental survey. So we have the two, two votes we need to make this morning. Uh, I apologize for the fact that some of you feel like this is coming at you a little quick, but the whole thing's coming at us a little quick, and I think we've been pretty transparent with you about how this has to move forward. Uh, there's one other item that's a very brief, small item. There's a, anytime you knock a building down, you have to pay for an environmental assessment. I don't believe we have anything environmentally sensitive over there, but we do have to have it inspected. So Americo Engineering, that's a third decision we have to make this morning. It's a, it's a not to exceed of 2,500. He comes in on an hourly rate, much like a design team. So that's another vote we have to make this morning. If you'll allow me, I'm gonna just make a few quick comments here. I, I'm, next year, I will have been on this fire department for 45 years. Um, I think it's the heart and soul of this community, as Megan shared those in those pictures with you. Um, I'll share I'll share with you some of the people that I've been involved with over the years. There was a guy named Joe Casey uh, who passed away. He's a good friend of mine. We were in a fire once up in uh, Dunlin Beach, and it was a kind of a an eerie scene because the woman was a big doll collector. That was her life. She had dolls everywhere. Well, if you can imagine the worst horror movie you've ever walked into in your entire life, most of them had melted and their faces were very, very eerie. But the best part of the whole scene was, it, it, I'm sad to say, any, I apologize to any APCA uh, members in the crowd, but the little poodle had passed away in the fire. My buddy Joe picked that little dog up with its collar on and brought it over to the fence and set it down on the ground and took the collar and hung it on the, the top of the fence and said, stay. And that was one of my favorite Joe Casey's uh, little humorous things. One of my first medical calls on the department was Ginny Gallon's son. She was one of our first responders. She was Her son was about maybe seven or eight years old. He, they were sledding down the driveway over at Stop 17. And if you're familiar with that geography, when you come up at 17, it's a big loop. That little guy was sledding down the hill, and some young 17-year-old ran right over the top of him. So we were down there holding on to his hands, and his mom was there, sad to say. We did our best. We tried to bring him around, but his poor little chest was crushed. And I just that, some of the calls that stick with you when you when you do this kind of work, uh, you just can never lose those. Susie Yemp's here to, this morning. Um, she's uh, Tom Yemp's wife. Our design team and our uh, fire chief, our current fire chief, one of the, one of our dual fire chief sons. When when her and her cousins were in their uh, family station wagon on Thanksgiving one after one evening, they were going back up to Grand Beach, I believe. I'm not sure where you started, Susie. That station wagon did a little, it was a, not the, really the driver's fault, it was nobody's fault. The, the, the uh, precipitation had skinned over on, on Highway 12, and that station wagon, the kids didn't all have their seatbelts on, just like we all did back then, none of us had seatbelts on. They fishtailed, and, and one little girl um, wound up getting traumatically injured, and she passed away that evening. So we had to take those kids out. Thank God it was dark enough that they really didn't see what was going on. But that's another one of these things that, you know, you, you have to realize we have to support all those people that are at these scenes. You know, we do it because we, we, our hearts are in it. And that's the kind of thing that this community benefits from, from a fire department like us. I'll share one other one with you. We had a, a situation down at Stop, a couple of other ones that I'll share with you. We had a situation at Stop 20 once, a uh, little baby, she was, I don't, or it was a boy, I'm sorry. I don't think it was much more than a year old. It turned all blue and the parents were very, very upset. It's a, a, it's a, daily, a daily family right around the corner from where I live. Uh, I, I held that baby in my arms and, and just was terrified that he was going to lose his airway. We just kept working on him, working on him. The ambulance came, I held that little baby in the ambulance. And we went all the way to the hospital, and they got him there, and they innovated him, and he survived. But I'm just telling you, you know, to sit in an ambulance, hold that little baby, this is the kind of thing we do on a daily basis. You know, I've been in situations that you just can't imagine. 
Um, and uh, Mary Lou McFadden had a tree fall on her house at one point. You know, that was, I can't even remember Mary Lou at what time of night that was, but I want to say it was after midnight. It was probably late in the evening. It was a storm night. It was raining. It, it was snowing, John. Snowing. 10,000 pound tree over yeah. the ours. Crashed into the house. We all ran over there. We wanted to make sure there wasn't any fire danger, electrical danger. We wanted to make sure we could help them as best we could. We put tarps over the furniture, moved things around in the house, if you recall, Mary Lou. That's the kind of department you have in your town. Uh, it wasn't a fire. It wasn't a medical call, but that's what we do. We come and help people. When I called the non-emergency number, it was Mike Chastain, and I think he thought it was like a little bitty tree. And he's like, well, we don't really do that. I said, no, I, I just, you know, I, I understand that. I'm. And so he drove by and put a spotlight. And he went, "Oh my God!" So, you know, we we have a we have a police department also. This building, thanks to Mike's suggestion, we call it the Public Safety Building because it includes a, a facility for the, our, our uh, uh, police officers, so that they can come in in the dead of night when they're dead tired and they've had a very rough night. They can pull into that garage in that place, get out, work out in the fitness room, relax a little bit, maybe make something in the kitchen, and then get back about their business. Or if they're off duty at that point, they can relax a little bit. I want to tell you a little story about Jason Yagelski. You know, we have some fantastic police officers. I'm so proud of Mark. He's been a wonderful addition to our community, as you all know. One night we had a little eight-year-old that fell out of a bunk bed, and this was a, a family that had a bunch of kids at the house. This little guy was terrified. His parents were terrified. He had a little bit of a gash in his head, but he was going to be fine. Jason went out to his squad car, and thanks to Mark's effort with his public relations campaign since he's been in here, he brought a little football in for that guy, one of those trashy little plastic footballs that we all know what they are. He brought that little football into that little guy and let him hold on to it, and then assured him that, because here it's a little intimidating, right? We all come flying in with radios making static, <laughs> and this policeman's in his uniform. He goes back out to the squad and brings that little football into that guy. That's the kind of thing that we do in this community for each other. So that's why we we're asking this, this council to support us in these efforts. I'm going to tell you two other quick stories. Pat McDonald was an individual, I think it was Lou Gehrig's disease, correct me if I'm wrong, Mary Lou. This individual was on the town council for many years, has been very supportive of the community. He wound up in real rough health shape. We were over there every time he came and went with the ambulance. It wasn't a medical call per se, but Mary McDonald would call me up and say, you know what, I've got to get Pat into the house. Six or eight of us would come over there and we'd carry his ambulance uh, gurney up into the house, make sure he was situated. Whenever he had issues, we'd come flying. One of his final uh, things during his final year was his birthday. What Mary asked us for was, can you come by with the fire trucks and can you run the sirens so he can be in that house and he can hear you? So we did that. I'm going to tell you one last story. A guy named Robert Scartosi, some of you may know him. He's a contractor. He's a builder. He passed away about a month ago. On his deathbed, what he wanted most was for the people that were involved in his medical care from our department, he wanted us to come by his house, and he wanted to thank each one of us personally. Christina Walsh is in the back of the room. Megan's here. A bunch of us went over there and, and said goodbye to Robert. And that's, that's, that's the kind of department you have here. And for us to, to wring our hands and say the kind of things that some people have said on social media and the other things just disturbs me. Questioning our fire department's ethics and, and, and saying that you can't afford to spend 10% of your reserves to give us a facility that we should have for our police and firemen to do this on a daily basis and keep this community glued together is just unfathomable that you people could not vote in favor of these things. So I would make a motion at this point that we vote in favor of three things. One is to spend 2,500 measly dollars on the environmental study for the building. The second is to pay the 300,000, approximately $300,000 invoice that's coming from Holiday, which is due at the end of this month. I would like to see it approved this evening, and I would like to make sure that it gets out before June 30th so that these individuals who have worked so hard to make this project a success don't have to worry about whether they're going to get paid or not. I've never, in all my years in construction, and I've been doing it for probably 50 years, I've never had a contractor have to worry about getting paid from a municipality because of bullshit politics. Thirdly, I would like us to authorize this $295,000 expenditure for the additional wonderful things that we've done as a group of design individuals, which include things like 
this beautiful brick facade. If you saw that, you all in the crowd didn't see it. When we passed around the picture of the $2.4 million facility that was Cool Springs Fire Department, it looks like it belongs on a farm somewhere with hogs in it. We want to have a facility that is presentable and, and, and matches our community's aesthetic. So we've done that with this. We've worked very hard. It's time to just bite the bullet and get done with this thing. We've done this facility for the parking. We've got this little bullet here so that, so that people don't run through their golf carts and hurt somebody walking in and out of there and their walker heading to a meeting because as you know in this community everybody's in a hurry. And we've got this beautiful parking area which hopefully maybe someday the pizza guy goes, goes and we can expand the, the public property down here. The forethought that we put into this is so that we have a facility and a site that works for this community in the future because as you know in our in our community, we have all different ages, all kinds of potentials. That's where we want to be. We want to be proud of ourselves. I'm proud that this council took and bite, bought the bill, bited the bullet, and, and allowed us to proceed. I want to finish this thing. We're at the 10 yard line. Let's finish it and let's not be carting with each other. About it. So, John, John well, there's one other approval I believe that's necessary as well to be consistent with our decision back on December 27th. If we need to approve a dollar amount for the town's obligation on this we, we, before we leave this meeting today. And I believe the number, based on what I've heard, is we've increased it from 2.5 and you're proposing two, for the town's obligation 2.795. You said 295000 is the addition. I'll leave the numbers um, to Megan. She knows more than I do, uh, Mike. But essentially what we're saying is we're going from a 2.5 construction cost to a 3.1 project cost, which includes, if you look at the, four, the last column on the page, it includes a lot of items that we feel are town-related, things like beefing up the parking lot, things like having a sprinkler system, which is not required by code, but we feel that the town should be progressive and step out and say that it's important that we protect those trucks and the equipment and the people that are in those buildings for meetings with a sprinkler system. We think it's important to have the aesthetic items that you mentioned that were, I think you and I talked about that number at the meeting we had earlier in the week, it was approximately, what, 270 or something we came up with that were aesthetic only. So those are the kind of things we're talking about. The project costs then, including things that, like the water line that comes in for the sprinkler system, increase the cost. So there's lots I'm of things. asking is, what are we approving? Well, I would like to make a motion that we approve the project cost at approximately 3.1, with, with the clear understanding that there could be potentially some other contingencies that come up as the project proceeds, including things like set the cost. I don't anticipate those being huge, but I don't want to have to, have to face this same nonsense six months from now where we say, all of a sudden we're $3,000 over our 3.1 and we have to have another public forum and we have to have another aggravating circumstance where we all carpet each other about a few extra dollars. I think that'd be a little ridiculous. So I would say, let's have a clear understanding of what we're doing. We're trying to put a three point something dollar, million dollar project together. And if it has to be that this motion needs to say, there might be a couple hundred thousand dollars swing in there somewhere in the future, then let's make it that if that makes you happy. Mike, I, to, be, to, to be clear, that, that 295, that is, in my opinion, in crunching the numbers with Carl Sender, that is the additional money that would be needed outside of the bond issuance from the town of Long Beach. The money is in the bank for the other costs. So that is the, I'm not looking at total project costs, I'm looking at total additional money. The, the 2.84 is gone, it's in the bank account, but the holding corp, it's, it's out. So the 295 is something that is outside of the bond issuance that we would ask the town council to approve so we can have this beautiful building from the various other available funds within your budget. That, that's what we're asking. Dr. Adam, all I care about is what are we approving as a town council, which is a town's obligation. And the number I keep coming back to is 2.795.
Dr. That's not the number, Mike. Yeah. The number of the, the project total cost is 3.1 as we identify it this morning. We I'm making a motion that this council approves a total project cost with the understanding that we may have other issues that arise during, like any other construction project in the universe, there may be some other things that happen to us that we're not aware of today, including potentially a little bit of septic costs if we unearth God help us, something bad underneath this construction. We've done some borings, but there may be some other things that could potentially happen to us. So I would propose that we, co we come up with an approval. Uh, my motion consists of exactly what I stated a few minutes ago. We have to approve that $300,000 invoice that's currently due by the end of the month. We have to approve $2,500 for an environmental study. And we have to approve a project cost of approximately $3.1 uh, John, Chris, uh, well, I, I, to, to Mr. Johnstone's point, because I feel like we're just getting lost in the semantics here. You're all saying the same thing. The, the total cost or the outlay, including the bond, we have 2.8 million, which it's not 8 million. It isn't anything that went to the chief or those that are on the building uh, corporation board, right? It's 2.84 that's sitting at U.S. banks subject to the disbursements that have been made that the way the system was set up so that every disbursement gets approved by this town council past present future with regard to this project so i believe that the motion should at least be here's the construction cost of 2.5 plus the additional or overall it's 3.1 I, I agree that the total cost including the financing and the contingencies mr johnson you, you're all saying the same thing so i think overall you need a number and then you have to decide as a council is it that hard number as you did before or are you going to entertain that it's flexible but Every cost is go going to have to come before the council for approval, and assuming there's proper change orders in place and and or amendments to the contract, et cetera, yeah. as necessary. Just so I get it straight, and I think I understand what Megan said. Basically, we're asking you're asking for approval to get the two hundred ninety thousand extra that the town's going to have to pay that wasn't included in all this other stuff. Just okay. we understand all that. We can get all bollock stuff in the finance, and I understand so. Yeah. So it, we're a little under 300000 short, is what yep. you're saying. It, after we've issued all the bonds, which include the contingency, Mr. Johnstone, so the 3.12 is the total project cost that we are looking for, total approval of, which would include additional outlay from the town of Long Beach for $295,000. We've already got the rest covered from some of us and then from some of the residents, and then what's already been issued to the bond bank account, holding court, whatever you want to call it, per Carl Center. And that's how I would like the motion to be stated in that dollar amount. Okay. And not, th not 3.1. And, and there's nothing to prevent us from keep getting donations from all of us out of the community. So if we want well, to give some they're, they're money, having a They're it. having a party, you know, so that was where the $25,000 commitment came from, Britt. So I think we can all like throw up a little extra money out of our pocket. And There'll be a collection on the way out. Yeah. So just well, open your pocketbook now, please. You better got a check instead of cash, you know. All right, so there was a motion from John. People had an issue with that. I did second that motion, by the way. Nobody could hear me, but I did. Um, so we've got an initial motion from John to basically pay a holidays invoice to pay for the $2,500 for the uh, pre-demolition environmental survey and then $295,000 for the additional items in terms of the, the cost and what, what got added. So that, mo that motion is out there, it is seconded. Discussion of that? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm sorry, we didn't, I didn't hear everybody. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, unanimous. Thank Anything you. Anything else we need to do? I, I guess the only question is, is, with that motion passing, once we get approval, hopefully from the health department, are we going to be able to put in a septic? Because I don't believe we approved money for that. Right? Well, we did. We we, are we going to come back and do this again? 
Well, we're going to have to find out what the subject's going to cost. I mean, it could be very little. Okay. Be a lot. Yeah. So that would be the plan to come back and do this again once we know what. Yes, that would be the plan. It'll be at a regular meeting. I would assume we could. Do. I hope. Yeah, and if yeah. we need it for some time frame, we'll have a special. We will never do anything without letting you know what the costs are before we do it, and you have to approve it, and that includes the septic, or if we find an Indian burial ground, or God help us, something else happens, you will be the first to know. Any council comments? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Come on, guys. I'll second. second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you all for coming.